you can write a love scene between Rahab and Kristen and just the, these, the, the fans will go nuts. They, you know, they should see some of the stuff that didn't make it in the movie. Oh. <laughs> Remember at the beginning of the show when I said Melissa Rosenberg, the writer of all the Twilight movies, was gonna come by? Well, I'm not lying. She actually was nice enough to stop by our show. Thank you so much. You have a million things going on, and yet uh, you're here hanging out with the screen addict. So uh, thank you very is, much. Where else would I want to be? It's your granddaughter. The Volturi think Renesmee is an immortal child. She was born, not bitten. She grows every single day. The Volturi, they're coming for us. It never surprises me when I see the, the fans react to these movies, yet it's still just incredible to think of, wow, the passion that these fans have for this, isn't it? You... It's completely surreal. It is uh, astounding. It's, it, it reminds me of the film clips I've seen of uh, the Beatles uh, arriving at the Ed Sullivan's Theater in the yeah. 60s. It's that sort of passion and fervor, which is incredible to be a part of. Now when you know that exists, and you're sitting there and you're about to write Breaking Dawn's part one and two, how do you remove yourself from that? Knowing that there's this <laughs> army of fans around the world that are gonna be holding every word you know, so close to their hearts. Oh, uh, it's, I have to, I have to turn it off. Yeah. I have to, I have to just be very present in the room I'm in with my dog and, and just focus on the You story. don't want to like tweet out, hey, what should Bella say to Jacob in this scene? <laughs> Actually, I feel like I, people would lose, they would literally, their minds would explode. I could use the help. You know? <laughs> when you were writing the first script for Twilight, the books were popular, but nobody had any idea that, that of the result to come. So what was your thought process when you were writing the first movie? Did you know that you were involved with something special? You know, I had never read the books when, when the studio uh, came to me with it. And I, I sat down and read it in one eight hour sitting and was completely hooked. Um, and, you know, the, the producers had told me, you know, this has kind of a fan base. You should check it out online. I went online for about half a second and, you know, <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Because if I, if I really acknowledged, even, even the, the fan base was smaller back then. Yeah. But if I even took a moment to really uh, take that in, I, I would have been frozen. You know what's funny to think back on now? I remember when Rob got cast and everyone was like, ugh. Oh. He's not like the guy in the book. What, this kid from Harry Potter? Like, get him out of here. Now he's, everybody loves him as Edward. It's hard to picture anybody else in the role. So what is it, how does it make you feel that, you know, the casting of him in the role that you wrote on screen now has sort of cemented him as a, as a big time movie star? You know, we're all, honestly, we're all just playing around in Stephanie's world. That, that character is so well-defined in the book. I was writing to it, Rob was, was you know, brought into to be that character. I mean, it was just sort of this perfect marriage of all the right elements. And he, I, I honestly, I can't imagine anyone else in that role. Well, I want to ask you some questions from the fans because sure. they hit me up on Twitter. All right, this is a question from at Vampire Freak 101. Any problems she had with adapting from book to script, things she had to leave out or add to make it work? Definitely, uh, lots of challenges. The, the biggest challenges for the entire series was that the book is written very much from Bella's point of view, and it's very inside her mind. So trying to externalize that was sort of the first and continuing challenge. For this movie, Breaking Dawn 2, I got to do something super fun. You know, in the books, because they're all told from Bella's point of view, then things like when, when Jacob comes to tell Bella, that he told her dad he's a werewolf. Stephanie wasn't able to write that scene because it's told from Bella's point of view. I get to write it. Yeah. So it was so much fun. And there's a number of Bella like going out and, and finding the vampires and such. You know, Bella in the book, Bella can only just hear the stories of their when they arrive. I get to go and actually travel to Egypt and travel to find Garrett. It was tons of fun. And of course, I worked very closely with Stephanie on And I think that, that's books. the thing that in this latest installment of the Twilight Saga is that the fans are really gonna enjoy the departures from the book. I think people are maybe a little nervous before the movie comes out. They hear that the film's taken some, some chances or done some things different, but that's obviously what you're excited for audiences to see, right? I mean, Absolutely, and what's, what's really true though is they're not actually departures from the book. They're just expansions on it, uh -huh. you know? That Stephanie, when she was writing those those pages, she had in her mind exactly what that scene with Charlie and Jacob, how that played out, you know? So, um, you know, I could bounce off a lot of things with her. Very cool, all right, let's get another one here. Um, at Angie T. Lucky, what inspires you for each movie? What is it about the Twilight saga of novels that had that inspired you to want to write them? 
besides knowing you were gonna be really rich. <laughs> um, you know, what really inspires me is the mythology that Stephanie came up with. I mean, it's so detailed, that world that she has invented and the characters in it. It's really rich mythology. It's a great place for a writer to play. You know, we have all these characters, and, and Stephanie, her own mind, has a huge uh, history for, you know, developed for every single character, no matter how small. And uh, so for me to be able to play around with those characters and be able to get into, you know, jump into her world, that's been, you know, I have to say it's been really great. As the, as the audience has gotten older with these movies, did you take that into consideration that, okay, we can make the love scenes a little bit more risque, we can go there a little bit more with the script? You know, I was always going there. It, it, it's, it, you know, I never would necessarily write for a specific age audience, aged audience or not. It was always what's the most compelling scene. And, you know, you really can write a pretty sexy love scene without necessarily showing things that go to that tip you into a, a higher rating. So I'm I'm just all about like, you know, let's put it on the page and see what we can get away with. <laughs> now that you've written these Twilight movies and they've gone on and made all this money, I would imagine studios are knocking on your door to write the next franchise or the next series of books. So is that happening? Are you getting approached for those types of projects? I was getting approached for a lot of teen romance and I feel like I've now done teen romance and I'm not gonna do it any better than I did it there. So I'm, I'm sort of done with teen romance. You also romance. did teen romance back in the day on the OC. I have done a lot of Team Romans, Party of Five. Yeah. I mean, you know, back. Yeah. Um, not to mention Step Up, but... Um, Are you just like at the Century City Mall, like looking at teenagers <laughs> and being like, there's so much angst over there. I should write that down. In fact, I, I have a visceral memory of my own teenage <laughs> years. Uh, but, but I would imagine studios come to you and say, oh, we have this book series and we want to turn it into a movie and you're the person to do that now. I'm, I'm actually doing that at uh, Paramount. There's a book called Earthseed uh, that was a, printed in 86, I think it's out of print now, although it may come back. And it's a, uh, it has a sort of sci-fi story with a kick-ass female lead and I'm, I'm psyched. Awesome. And, and hopefully that will turn into a, a series. You're working on Dexter as well. What is it about that show that, that you enjoy so much and I would imagine is a nice, not distraction from Twilight, but a different skill set and a different challenge? Uh, different and yet Rose. the same in many ways, you know, but uh, with Dexter you really can get into that black comedy, that really edgy, dark comedy. It's, it's, it's not dissimilar in some ways to Twilight. It's, it's just uh, Twilight's a little, um, it's, it has the edge, but you just have to solve it. There's just a lot less making out in Dexter. There's a well, lot. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the episode. It depends yeah. on the season. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, and you have a project coming out uh, in the spring, another TV project with one of my favorite actresses, Rada Mitchell. What can you tell us about I that? I do. I can tell you that Rada is unbelievably uh, great in this series. This is like a, a vehicle for her and her talents. And it's an incredible cast. It's called Red Widow, and it'll be coming to ABC in the spring, probably February, March, somewhere there. Let's get to the beginning of your career. What first made you want to be a writer? You know, I had a lot of different interests. I wanted, I was a wannabe choreographer, and I was interested in politics and music and all sorts of things. And I, what I discovered, once I figured out that writing for TV and film was actually a job, you know, people actually pay you to do this, which took me a while to figure out. Um, people pay you to be on YouTube, too. There you go. So, that's a job. <laughs> <laughs> right, Mom? Get off my back. <laughs> <Sorry>. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, what I realized is that writing, particularly writing for film and television, is really a way to, to utilize all your different experiences. You know, I wrote dance movies. I could write uh, political stories. I could write, you know, use music a great deal. I mean, all the, th all the myriad interests I had mm -hmm. all sort of translated into one medium. So it was, it was pretty enriching for me. But what's a valuable lesson uh, you might want to share with any aspiring writer who's, who's watching this? Learn as much as you can. Uh, hone your craft. Um, it's, and, and this is perhaps corny, but uh, don't give up. I mean, it's, it's a brutal business actually, but you know, a lot of businesses are. Yeah. So when you're down there, you know, you've been kicked in the teeth and you're down there lying uh, on the ground bleeding. Did you yeah. have a rock bottom moment? Did you have oh, a moment when you think, all sure. right, this writing thing's not gonna happen? Really? Sure, yeah. I, I think maybe after the first job I ever had, I got fired. I got fired a lot coming up. <laughs> and I was devastated. I, I, I thought, when I got the job, I thought, this is it. I'm going to just, you know, continue on up. And it turns out, that's not how it works. It didn't work in my career that way. And I had like a year long writer's block and I, you know, went horribly into debt. It was terrible. Wow. And now here you are on the eve of Breaking Dawn 2 being released and millions of fans around the world are camping out right now, maybe watching this on their phones or their iPads or something. That's gotta be such a great feeling to know that your work is, to have a project that you know people are gonna go see. 
And that's an incredible thing. That doesn't happen all the time for writers. It doesn't. Never happens. You never know if. I mean, TV sometimes. If you, I was going to put it out there, Melissa. I think people are going to go see this new Twilight movie. <laughs> Just a hunch. Yes. My gut, my expertise says that I think people are going to go see this. It's been. I've been. I thoroughly enjoying that. I think it's gonna be a horribly rude awakening for the next movie I do. It's like, well, are they gonna come? Are they not gonna come? I don't know. No one's camping out. No one's to see camping it. out. Right. Now, the essential Twilight question, and I don't even know if you can answer this, Jacob or Edward? Whomever I'm writing at the time. Right. Oh, so diplomatic. No, it's true though. So diplomatic. Gotta love whoever you're writing. Okay, well, Melissa Rosenberg is incredible for hanging out with us. Be sure to go see Twilight this weekend. I'm sure you're probably seeing it a thousand times anyway. So see Excellent. it a thousand and one times from Melissa. And I will ask you off camera all about working with Jason Priestley on Love Monkeys because I'm uh, using 90210 for oh, it. Sure. And I could probably nerd out, but <laughs> nobody wants to watch that. Gray Drake takes a stab at the worst vampire movies ever made. Screen addict host Ben Lyons gives his take on the latest Hollywood movies and filmmaking news. Phil Gower decides to take his love of Twilight to the streets, determined to be first in line. His love of Twilight is twi hard and will not die. Devin Faraci bellies up for a martini with three fellow critics to decide which Bond is the greatest. J.B. Smoove and his buddy Garfield can't get enough of Twilight as they tell us what they heard about Breaking Dawn Part 2. Hit the red carpet at AFI Fest 2012 with IndieWire.